Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mueller, over here. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, you had three discussions with Rod Rosenstein about your appointment as special counsel, May 10th, May 12th, and May 13th, correct? If you say so, I have no reason to, to dispute that. Then you met with the president on the 16th with Rod Rosenstein present, and then on the 17th you were formally appointed as special counsel. Were you meeting with the president on the 16th with knowledge that you were under consideration for appointment to special counsel? I did not believe I was under consideration for uh, uh, counsel. Uh, the, uh, I had uh, served two terms. As FBI okay, director? So the answer is no. And the um, answer is no. Greg Jarrett describes your office as the team of partisans. Um, and as additional information is coming to light, there's a growing concern that political bias caused important facts to be omitted from your report in order to cast the uh, president unfairly in a negative light. For example, uh, John Dowd, the president's lawyer, leaves a message with Michael Flynn's lawyer on November 17th of 2017, uh, November 2017. The edited version in your report makes it appear that he was improperly asking for confidential information, and that's all we'd know from your report, except that the judge in the Flynn case ordered the entire transcript released, in which Dowd makes it crystal clear that's not what he was suggesting. So uh, my question is, why did you edit the transcript to hide the exculpatory part of the message? Well, I'm not certain I would agree uh, with your characterization as uh, we did anything to hide well, you, omit it, you omitted it. You, you quoted the part where he says we need some kind of heads up just for the sake of protecting all of our interests if we can, but you omitted the portion where he says without giving up any confidential information. Well, I'm not going to go further in terms of discussing the... Uh, well, let, let's go on. You, you extensively discuss Konstantin Kalimnik's activities with Paul Manafort. You describe in his quote, a Russian-Ukrainian political consultant and longtime employee of Paul Manafort assessed by the FBI to have ties to Russian intelligence. And again, that's all we'd know from your report, except we've since learned from news articles that Kalimnik was actually a U.S. State Department intelligence source, yet nowhere in your report is he so identified. Why was that fact? I don't, I don't necessarily credit uh, what you're saying uh, occurred. Were you aware that Kalimnik was uh, a, a I'm not going to go into the department ins and I'm not going to go in the ins and outs of what we had in the, cor did did in the, cor in the course did you of our investigation. Did you interview Konstantin Kalimnik? Pardon? Did you interview Konstantin Kalimnik? I can't go into the discussion of uh, our uh, investigative moves. And, and yet that is the, 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 the basis of your report. Again, the, the problem we're having is we have to rely on your report for an accurate reflection of the evidence, and we're starting to find out that's, that's not true. For example, uh, you, you, your report famously links Russian Internet troll farms with the Russian government. Yet at a hearing on May 28th in the Concord Management IRA prosecution that you initiated, the judge excoriated both you and Mr. Barr for producing no evidence to support this claim. Why did you suggest Russia was responsible for the troll farms when in court you've been unable to produce any evidence to support it? Well, I'm not going to get into that any further than I, than I already have. But, but you, you have left the clear impression throughout the country through your report uh, that uh, uh, it was the Russian government behind the troll farms, and yet when you're called upon to provide actual evidence in court, you fail to do so. Well, I would again uh, uh, dispute your characterization of what occurred in that, pre in that proceeding. In, in, in fact, the judge, considering, uh, considered holding prosecutors in criminal contempt, she backed off only after your hastily called press conference the next day in which you retroactively made the distinction between the Russian government and the Russia troll farms did your press conference of May 29th have anything to do with uh, the threat to hold your prosecutors in contempt the previous day for publicly misrepresenting the evidence? What was the question? The, the, the question is, did your May 29th press conference have anything to do with the fact that the previous day the judge threatened to hold your prosecutors in contempt for misrepresenting evidence? No. Now, the... The, 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 the fundamental problem is, is, as I said, we've got to take your word, your team faithfully, accurately, impartially, and completely described all of the underlying evidence in the Mueller report, and we're finding more and more instances where this just isn't the case. And it's starting to look like, you know, having desperately tried and failed to make a legal case against the president, you made a political case instead. You put it in a paper sack, lit it on fire, dropped it on our porch, rang the doorbell, and ran. 
I don't think you will have re uh, reviewed a report that is as thorough, as fair, as consistent as the report that we have in front of us. Then, then why is contradictory? The time of the gentleman has expired. The gentleman out. from Maryland is recognized.